A harp as a uh, an array of antenna can be focused uh, and concentrated. You got to think about this in a much different way than normally how radio frequency energy behaves. If you think about a radio broadcast antenna, a broadcasting radio frequency energy, that energy dissipates or spreads out very rapidly from the point of broadcast, the antenna, out into the atmosphere. And the further away you get, the less dense, the less concentrated is that radio frequency energy, which is why radio stations eventually fade out over uh, distance. On the other hand, what HARP does is by firing this array or field of antennas, you imagine firing them in such a way as to create kind of a corkscrewing motion, a cyclotron resonance is what it's called, where that energy is then focused to a smaller and smaller area, and as it hits the ionosphere, it becomes concentrated. And think about that in the same way as light coming off of a laser versus light coming off of a flashlight. When you think about HARP, Think about it as a mechanism on the ground uh, that's designed to interact directly or plug into those magnetic field lines uh, and actually then use the environment itself as part of the machine on the ground. And, and think about it in this sense. Think about that machine on the ground, uh, this field of antenna uh, broadcasting radio frequency as a primer, um, the small amount of energy, because the big energy is contained in the natural environment. The idea is, is if we understand enough about how these mechanisms work, then we can trigger uh, various cascading effects where it sort of builds on the energy that's naturally in place. And so when you think about HARP, not just in the, in the effect of magnetic field lines, but another opportunity to manipulate energetic systems within the Earth has to do with the ionosphere itself. And imagine that ionosphere is a bubble around the Earth, um, several hundred miles thick, again, starting about 30 miles off the Earth's surface. Now, that's a highly charged area, a tremendous amount of energy potential there. In fact, some will remember a number of years ago, there was a shuttle experiment where they a drug, a tether, a dangling wire through the ionosphere to see what would happen. And energy was picked up as it moved because when you move something, uh, a conductor through uh, an electric field that's as charged as the ionosphere, it actually begins to move current, which it did. It shunted that current straight into the shuttle and almost blew it out of the sky. One of the other thoughts with, with HARP systems are the actual heating of the ionosphere. And when, it, when it's heated, because this energy is concentrated, what happens is the ionosphere then lifts up, moves out several hundred kilometers. Now imagine if you're a satellite drifting through space where there's no atmosphere, and all of a sudden you hit a column of atmosphere. Uh, what will happen is it creates friction, and that friction causes that satellite to burn up and all of a sudden you got a satellite down. When you turn the instrument off, everything goes back to normal um, and you have plausible deniability on a satellite going down because nobody knows this kind of technology generally exists. Now the other place you can use it in that same application, imagine that column uh, going out several hundred miles into space from its normal atmospheric level way down here. Now you've got an incoming comet or asteroid coming in from outer space at tremendous velocity. Now normally those objects, when they hit our atmosphere, they again encounter tremendous friction, they burn up, and most objects just dissipate before they ever hit the surface. But big objects, the kinds of objects people are worried about, um, if you could, say, go from 30 miles of atmosphere to 200 miles of atmosphere, almost seven times as much distance, and project a trajectory downward, what you're able to do in that instance is literally allow those larger objects to burn up uh, way before they hit the Earth. In fact, the um, Strategic Studies Institute in London, in reviewing Soviet research on this very same technology, was suggesting uh, that it could be used for an, an anti, um, uh, not an anti-satellite technology so much as an anti-asteroid or comet-based technology. But all of those things also create a side effect. When you move that much atmosphere up into space, and it's about 30 miles diameter, uh, these columns, so imagine 30 miles in diameter and a couple hundred miles up, well below that are pressure systems, high pressure, low pressure systems, and jet streams, all of which can be altered by the manipulation of the ionosphere uh, in this way. And that then creates downstream weather effects that, that cannot be modeled, that cannot accurately be predicted, uh, and therein lies 
uh, huge problems when you start to manipulate uh, by technology uh, technology applications to create one effect you might in a, inadvertently create a number of other effects as is the case uh, with heart